Hi everyone, this is Scott, KD4SIR. For those wanting the info or the trick to get Minecraft, Mine OS Turnkey to work in 2024, the secret sauce is to upgrade, update Java to the latest version in order to run a Minecraft server version 1.20.6 or later. Uh, the links are in the description. And if that's all you want, now it's for my longer video and story of my stroll. And if you want to avoid that, then you can click away now and just look at the description. I got addicted to Minecraft back in the day when my kids were younger, and I just like building games. So I'm in my 50s. I'm still enjoying Minecraft. And I've been, since COVID, since the worldwide thing there that happened in, a 19, in 2020, I started a Minecraft server and been working on that particular world for the last four years. I really enjoyed it. So in this seed, I have about 16 villages that I've discovered, and I've built roads to each one of them. I'm building a railroad to each of them now. I have redone all of them, and uh, maybe I'll do a whole video on my seed here. But anyway, I spent the last four or five days trying to get mine OS to work on a new Proxmox server. Now, if you're an expert in Proxmox or Linux or Alderman Guru, this video really isn't for you. It's for regular idiots like me, Windows computer users, who know enough to get in the weeds and make a mess, who aren't crazy about the command line Linux stuff. So recently I created an Unraid server with the spare beef.pc and eight of my biggest spare different sized hard drives. And I love the whole pick your docker to run just about anything. It seems super easy and I'm going to save you a lot of time and say buy a license for that. You won't regret this and however I ended up using my Unraid server as a backup of my TrueNAS server and a backup of my media library using SyncThing. Um, and I'm thinking at some point this may be moved off site to a family member's house as a true off site backup. So I didn't want to add mine OS to it, although that would have been an option. After watching some YouTube late one night I ended up finding a Lenovo P seven hundred server on eBay for hundred and twenty five bucks. And when I got it, I immediately realized it was kind of a money pit because, uh, you know, when you get a, P a server like that, you just got to buy the second CPU and a CPU cooler. And, of course, you have to buy memory. It's got, like, 12 memory slots, so you got to buy a lot of memory for it. And then there's, they got four hard drive bays in there, and, you know, I had to fill those with refurbished hard drives. And so with some research from the Home Lab guys, they're telling me to use Proxmox instead of the Unraid due to the virtualization. So... I agree, but I, I kind of miss the whole pick your docker thing that Unraid has. and um, So this is my Proxmox server. Uh, to put it to proper use, I'm taking different computers, uh, Raspberry Pis and uh, things I got running in the house here, and I'm putting it in this Proxmox server. And I've always wanted a, a media server. I chose Jellyfin because it's open source. I uh, really had a lot of fun with setting up Jellyfin and getting that done from a media server. So. All right, well, let's get started. The problem I had was that Mino, Mino OS Turnkey, well, Turnkey would start, but the latest profile, I couldn't get the server that I had in Turnkey, the Mino OS, to start with the latest profile. Through some uh, logs and things, I finally discovered that it was because Java wasn't updated. Once I had Java updated, then it was easy. Let's get started from the beginning. I, I'm sorry I played the video and it doesn't sync up with the audio. So uh, that's just to make the video a little shorter. You saw me using uh, WinSCP. That's what you use to uh, transfer your files. Basically, you're going to log into your old server using SSH and, and the root uh, user. And you're going to navigate to var games, Minecraft slash servers. All this is in the description. And you're going to zip that up on the Windows PC and then you're going to move that zip file. It doesn't have to be a tar. You can move the zip file over to the import folder. Again, it's in the description there. Next, we're going to download Mine OS Turnkey. And the, the place you download that is in the description as well. And I renamed it MineOSTurnkey.iso. I show you in the video how to add that to your ISOs. And then we're going to create a virtual machine, as you see me doing right here. So we're creating the virtual machine. At one point when creating the virtual machine, I, I uh, enabled QEMU guest agent. I don't think that's actually required, but I think I may want to use that later. 
and I don't know if I can or not, but it's something I just enabled, and I kind of shook my cursor there. Um, you don't have to do that. All right, here I'm, I'm running mine OS for the first time, uh, and I'm just basically going through all the default stuff. So if it, the only thing I that I come across that I did not do was the um, um, here later, after I'm doing the grub now, but here later is going to ask me about the turnkey items. That's coming up. From here on, it's kind of real time. I'm watching it with you. remove the packages and then restart here you go in back into proxbox and you take your uh, you go down to the hardware and you remove the CD double click on that and then you can tell it to remove no media and then I forgot how to get back to my console so I created another console up here you don't have to do that you can go back to your other console I just kind of got lost in my windows here, so with my recording software. So you want to? I created. I went back to another console. You don't have to do that. So I just start hitting in there, and I go to reboot. All right, and we're in. So now I'm going to create password for the root. You want to remember these. Write these down. So I'm going to create the password for the root, and I got to type it in twice. And then the password for MC, again, write that down. Um, up. Now here I skipped. This is what I skipped. And then I skipped the email too. I didn't want to have it email me. And then you want to do the install here. Hit the install, or hit the um, update. You want to hit that update. This takes a while. We'll edit this. And we're back. So now we're going to have to default reboot here. Alrighty. Now note here your IP address. You'll need to remember your IP address and the we're going to use uh, putty to get in here to do to SSH. All right, now we're going to putty in. Remember that that uh, IP address there. We're going to log in as the root. There we go. We're going to log in as root. And we're going to put in our password. And if you get an interface there that says that, that interface or whatever, that you go ahead and quit, log back in, because you probably didn't get the password right. So go ahead, back, log back in, go ahead and quit that putty, and then restart a new putty. Okay, here we're going to copy over our lines from the description. Uh, big thanks for um, big thanks to community. No community. 351 on Reddit for giving me this. It was very, good, very kind of him to share his uh, the secret sauce here to get us to be able to run the latest Minecraft server on mine OS. So you'll see me copy and if you if you if you highlight in Windows and Control C and then right click in the Linux, uh, it pastes automatically. So. Here I'm installing the new Java. Yeah, it's really this this was the hardest part. I couldn't figure out how to get Java. I didn't know what the reason it just wouldn't start. Couldn't get the server to start, and if it did start, it would only start with the latest, with the older profile. It wouldn't start with the latest Java. 
So, I never played Minecraft Bedrock or any of the other versions, just Java. I got, I got kind of like Java, it was the main one. So, anyway, here's mine OS started. Um, you're going to, I end up creating a server here uh, because I didn't import, but remember, if you're going to import, you're going to, you're going to import the server, but before you start it, you want to download your profile. I'll do that here in a second. Again, my seed is the... Uh, I'm going to create the new server. My um, seed is 4803-901-4634-6166. That's... I love that world. Uh, like I said, I think I've... Ton of, maybe I, I should really should do a video on that. Uh, and I always play survival. Don't play the other stuff. I play survival and then I play a normal mode. And um, gives me just as much. So I gotta keep going to sleep. Carry a bed with you. Let's go to sleep. And you play with multiple people. It's kind of a pain. But um, now here you'll see the profile says MC something, and it won't update to the latest profile. You have to go in here to uh, the profiles and you want to download the latest one and if your server was older when you moved it mine was 20.0 point 20 1.20.4 and then I downloaded the latest one which is 0.6 and then um, you're going to go to the server itself. <coughs> and here you're going to make sure down here you select this one's the latest jar here. And then here under the jar Java settings you want to select the latest one there. If it's not there, if it's not there, wait. If you're importing your server, it hasn't done those service the servers those things yet. So wait, just wait and see if you can hit it. If you don't hit it, hit the the copy to the folder and then um, see if it happens. But when you start the server, you're going to see, you're going to wait for this ping, wait for it to load up enough to ping uh, the latest one. And then you can go over here to your log file and see where it's loaded, if it's loaded the world yet all the way. Once you get the world loaded up, you're ready to go in and play some Minecraft. So that is the key. That was that's it. But if you don't like I said, it's if you import your server, um, you want to make sure when you import, you want to wait until you get to that that Java in here. Now I've forgotten something. I started the server and forgot to add all my memory that I wanted to add to it. So uh, when I went to a particular city called Frazzle City, uh, if I if I walked too fast to it and the server didn't draw fast enough, it was a huge city. I, I built a lot of buildings and things in it and then if I walk too fast at the server would crash so this is the reason for me to give it so much memory and I uh, didn't realize how much lagging it was doing when I was playing the game until I until I played it with here so um, but yeah you want to set your uh, your memory here for that now the the um, MS the top number is the maximum memory and the bottom one is the minimum memory so the MS is the minimum memory I think is what it says I can barely see this on when I'm editing so but there you have it thank you very much for watching my video and I hope you have a lot of fun with Minecraft alright happy Minecrafting everybody bye bye